Come on up. Good morning, Basel. How are you today? It's really amazing. Everybody looks so happy and awake today. Uh, it must be either the 5K run or the pancake breakfast. Uh, thanks for that, by the way. Um, by the way, some of you may have recognized the song that was just played because uh, it used to be the Formula One theme song. And we've chosen it intentionally, of course, because it fits quite well to the title of our keynote, uh, Move Fast and Don't Break Things. But also, as a reminder to ourselves that today, and now we only have 10 minutes to talk, um, so let's get right into this and talk about speed. Right, Daniela? Right, because as you all know, speed wins in the marketplace. And that has also been pointed out in the book by Matt Stein, where he talks about migrating to cloud-native application architectures. And he underlines that speed is the central aspect to innovate fast and to deliver value more quickly than your competitors do. And in the context of software engineering, this means that we need to go away from yearly or quarterly updates towards deploying software in a daily fashion or even, or even in continuous builds. So speed is important. But the question is, what brings us up to speed? And most importantly, what allows us to move fast? And what you need is a platform, like SAP Cloud Platform, that allows you to easily build, test, and deploy applications in the cloud. And since we all know that there is no, only one cloud, SAP Cloud Platform supports you in bringing your applications to all of the big hyperscale cloud providers, so wherever you need to host your workload. Um, and um, now I lost my track. Give me a second. No, um, what, I'm, what I'm trying to say is that if you have a strong platform, it acts as the foundation of your cloud-native journey. And since we all know that this journey can be tough sometimes, SAP Cloud Platform brings some additional capabilities, like business and platform services. So for example, it allows you to easily connect your existing landscapes, uh, additional runtimes like the SAP Java Build Pack, and of course, data and storage services like the SAP HANA in-memory database, which in this environment is exposed via, guess what, a service broker. So Daniela, is this enough? No, we don't think this is enough. It's not enough to go extremely fast. You also need to, to ensure that you have safety nets, that you have pit stops in place, in place because you need to ensure that you do not break things. So if you think of a typical deployment pipeline, you have quality gates, including functional tests and security scans, as well as acceptance tests in place. And this already uh, provides a, a really proper safety net. But there may be cases where only a blue-green comparison shows that a new application version is performing poorly. And with having a software intelligence solution like Dynatrace integrated into your deployment pipeline, you would get information about the fact that your new application version is performing poorly, and Dynatrace would also reject that this new version is being promoted to production. But Dynatrace provides you with, with much more. You will get an all-in-one contextual monitoring solution that supports the full stack from the end users, from the applications, down to the infrastructure level, all dependencies between your microservices, your apps, containers, processes, hosts, data centers, all, all of that is uh, detected automatically by Dynatrace. And on top of all that, the Dynatrace AI engine will also detect if one of your Cloud Foundry applications or one of your Cloud Foundry platform components, like the Ego Cells, are having problems. Now, you all can imagine this requires quite some integration work to work perfectly together 
which is why SAP and Dynatrace partnered to improve both SAP Cloud Platform as well as Dynatrace to give our customers the best experience when monitoring applications with Dynatrace on top of SAP Cloud Platform. And of course, this also requires quite some work on all the various levels. Um, so for today, we've prepared a little demo to show you at least some of the things that we've been working on recently. And in order to have a demo that is both fast and reliable, uh, we decided today uh, to go for a short video. So Theo, please play the video. There we go. So we've been using the uh, SOC shop, which is an open source microservice based uh, web shop that you can use. Um, it employs quite some different technologies. You can buy socks, amazing socks, by the way. Um, you can check it out, add it to the card, review your card, and if it fits your style, you can purchase it. And all that is, of course, deployed to SAP Cloud Platform. So let's see how it looks like in the cloud cockpit. And first of all, since our web shop is already popular all around the world, uh, we've decided to, play, uh, to deploy to multiple, multiple hyperscale cloud providers, so, um, and also to five different regions. So we have one in the APJ region, uh, North America, South America, and in Europe. Um, so let's see how it looks like in the um, EMEA region now. And more specifically, let's drill down to Cloud Foundry Spaces. So we see here we have a staging space for our integration tests and a production space. So let's see how it looks like in the production space. There we go. So we see all the applications that make up our SOC shop deployed in a blue-green fashion. This, for example, is the CARDS um, um, microservice, which exposes the CARDS API. And we see some additional information, like the build pack, for example. Yeah, and speaking about build packs, with Dynatrace being integrated in various build packs, it has never been easier to connect your Cloud Foundry application with a Dynatrace monitoring environment. All you need to do is create a, a user-provided service. And then you will see something like this nice dashboard, which provides you with an overview of the SOC shop applications and all the services and their performance. And we will now take a closer look at the technologies that are used by SOC shop, and we will focus on the Apache and Node.js processes. More specifically, we will have a look at the CARDS process, of which we currently have two instances running. And we are now on the, on the process group that is, that is uh, representing the CARDS process. And as you can see, Dynatrace automatically picks up Cloud Foundry-specific metadata, like the application or the space, and since recently also the organization in which the application is running in. And we've also supplied custom metadata via environment variables. And what is also really nice is that Dynatrace is aware of the fact that we do have a blue and a green version of this CARDS service running in that environment. And we are now switching to the blue uh, instance of the CARDS service, and there you again have all the Cloud Foundry-specific custom metadata available. Cool. So we've seen how it looks like in the cloud cockpit. Uh, we've seen how it looks like in Dynatrace, but how did it get, get, get there? Since we love Conquerors, we've decided to set up pipelines. Uh, we have a dedicated pipeline for all of the microservices that make up our SOC shop. So let's see how the CARDS pipeline look like. Um, well, obviously, the pipeline is triggered with every new Git commit to a certain branch. Uh, once there is a new commit, we build it, we deploy it to our staging environment, um, we run some health checks, um, some custom health checks, and we deploy it to our production environment, where we finally run some, ac um, some load tests. And this is exactly the point where we ask Dynatrace in our pipeline whether this change can safely be promoted to production. So let's see whether we can create a pull request that breaks this pipeline. So we switch to pull requests. Um, yeah, so there is a pull request, no surprise here, um, that checks, um, that adds a check to the stocks when an item is added to the cart. And now this time, um, there's an exception. We um, implemented it, it uh, deliberately in, in, a, in a bad fashion, um, and we will just merge it now. Of course, you could run this check already by just creating a pull request, but let's just, for the sake of this demo, 
merge it and fast forward a bit. I love this step. Um, and now this time we can see that Dynatrace rejects this uh, commit and it's not being promoted to production. So let's find out why, Daniela. Yeah, let's, let's analyze this deployment and the change and the impact of the change in Dynatrace. So on the service details screen, you already see an increased response time of the new version uh, that has been uh, deployed or that has been created by this change. And if we now compare the two service instances, the response time increase becomes even more apparent. And of course, we could drill down here even to the code level in Dynatrace, but we also want to talk about the subtitle of our keynote, exactly. right? Exactly. And the, scream, the, the screen is screaming already quite, quite heavily. So uh, <laughs> let's go back to the slides, please. <laughs> Um, so, some of you may have recognized that our talk also has a subtitle, um, which is how we will build applications in the future. And um, a few talks before ours, there was a nice saying that the future is now, and this is basically what we believe. And we believe that the future is now, and it has to be fast and safe. Um, if you want to find out more, more, we're more than happy to meet you at the SAP and the Dynatrace booths. Um, there's also going to be another session at 10 past 2, I think, in room Cairo, Cairo exactly, exactly uh, where you get um, some more insights even in, in, in the on the technical details. Thank you so much for having us. Um, wish you a great rest of the conference. Thank you. Thank you.